I would like to speak about the large-scale petition that is presently being distributed in an effort to stop short sales, which could ultimately lead to its outlawing. Please stay alert as I discuss the circumstances that caused the Securities and Exchange Commission's SE to decide to take this step in an effort to maintain its reputation and potentially gain re-election. The next crucial section is as follows information about investor calls for a temporary prohibition on short selling in the U.S. stock market was released by an investor going by the name of TERF. The Securities and Exchange Commission CC and the government are reportedly being approached by a sizable number of businesses and individual investors to temporarily outlaw short selling in the U.S. stock market. They claim that investors have lost millions of dollars as a result of the practice of fake short selling which has caused serious problems for businesses. They might be obliged to file for bankruptcy and shut down in 2020 as a result of these immoral strategies. Over 30 listed businesses have started to look into their own stock holdings in an attempt to stop the illicit practice of synthetic short selling. Share numbers were found to be out of balance in most of these inquiries. The reality of naked short selling in the market was acknowledged when the Securities and Exchange Commission SEC prosecuted an investment advisor in 2023 with creating an abusive scheme including naked short selling. Numerous American financial organizations have been charged by the C with fraud related to naked short selling. These claims have also been made by managing partner How D Mints and CBI Management LLC. Elon Musk addressed the topic of short selling in his CNBC interview, stating that the Securities and Exchange Commission SEC should have taken action but, for whatever reason, decided against doing so. In the paragraphs that follow, I will provide the official URL of the modification.a petition to ban short sales on the website org, which has been extensively shared by Metan News in several Twitter accounts. This website differs from others in that it has been operating continuously for a long time and does not collect personal information about individual investors. The website org is the most significant platform since it serves as the main hub for hosting and managing petitions. As per a tweet from Meta News, South Korea has implemented a market wide and permanent ban on short selling to placate ordinary investors ahead of the upcoming parliamentary elections in the following year. Consequently, there's a possibility that the United States of America will adopt a comparable tactic. It is noteworthy to emphasize that South Korea took this recent action in response to a petition that resembled the one that is currently becoming more and more popular. This is what distinguishes the action. It is obvious that the nation's current administration wants to stay in office for another term, which is why they need the backing of regular investors. Furthermore, it is imperative to mention that the U.S. elections are slated to occur during the same time frame. President Joe Biden nominated Gary Gendler to lead the United States Securities and Exchange Commission CC. Gendler hasn't, however, taken any action to stop artificial short selling as of yet. If you were informed that Gary Gendler would be the President of the United States for a lengthy duration, at least four years, think about if you would support Joe Biden or the Democratic Party in a subsequent election. I have made it a point to steer clear of politics whenever I can in order to maintain this channel's non-political atmosphere. Nevertheless, I would like to suggest that you consider whether you would rather advocate for a complete overhaul of the Securities and Exchange Commission CC in the outlawing of synthetic short selling, or whether you would prefer to extend Gary Gindler's term as its director. CDIO reached a high of $11.36 before to the market opening. It was already noted. The stock had a price increase at the start of trading, a slight decline in the middle of the day, and a last price increase around the close of trading yielding an incredible 76% overall gain. Moses quickly turned a profit of about $1,600. Gann was able to earn close to $300 in a short amount of time. He made about $300 on his first trading day after joining the collective on Friday, which was also his first trading day in general. Doc Holliday achieved an exceptional level of performance by buying at $1.76 and selling at $216 prices. You may get a 76% return on investment in a single day or make $300 in a matter of minutes. Should the changes not work as intended, South Korea can choose to keep the ban on short sales in place. This is a point that has to be made. Furthermore, it is reported that South Korea is thinking of taking a number of measures to punish unauthorized short sellers, including restricting their ability to trade stocks for a maximum of 10 years. It is reported that South Korea is thinking about taking these steps, but I was not able to witness it. I wholeheartedly endorse the imposition of laws in the United States that would penalize banks, hedge funds, market makers, or any other organizations involved in permitted stock short sales. I would also be in favor of these policies being put into place globally. There's no denying that a 10-year categorical ban would be a great way to combat synthetic short selling 
and it would undoubtedly garner a lot of support in the upcoming elections. If it is found that the reform efforts are insufficient, South Korea may decide to keep its complete prohibition on short selling of stocks in place past June of the following year. The Securities and Exchange Commission SEC will be forced to outright forbid short sales in order to preserve its good name. The petition has only received 3,800 signatures as of right now, although 2,000 more people have signed it today. However, I'm confident that we can gather a sizable number of signatures tens of thousands, 30,000, or perhaps 50,000, depending on how many people sign. The link to this petition can be found in the description that follows. I urge you to sign the petition if you are a retail investor who is worried about synthetic short selling. Stefan believes that the Securities and Exchange Commission CC will eventually have to implement Rule 804 in order to accomplish this goal of ending dark pool trading. His contention is that the evidence against short hedge funds has not been substantial enough to adequately substantiate their claims in a court setting. My opinion is that a sizable amount of concrete evidence that is appropriate to be presented in court is currently at our disposal. Furthermore, he asserted that the decision to withhold the FTD data is proof positive that they have, in fact, accumulated this particular kind of evidence. The preliminary data for the first half of October is currently unavailable, while the data for the second half of the month has already been made available to the public. They later said that the material could not be provided for a number of reasons, most likely related to the potential for legal action in response to the request, after receiving one under the Freedom of Material Act. It is possible that the Securities and Exchange Commission SEC or any other relevant authority will do so if they have tangible facts, data, or evidence that would be admissible in court. Rule 804 of 4 might be put into effect by the Securities and Exchange Commission CC if it makes the decision to take decisive action to protect its reputation. My interest was particularly piqued by the seeming difficulties Wells Fargo is facing in carrying out its legal obligations and strengthening its supervision of financial misconduct. These brokers and trading platforms were held liable for the deeds and crimes that their clients committed in a lawsuit that was recently successfully settled. Consequently, in order to ensure that hedge funds and their customer base, as well as banks are abiding by the regulations, these brokers and trading platforms must maintain close supervision over their activities. It seems like Wells Fargo is working hard to fulfill the new regulatory obligations placed upon the business. They assert that the bank has received formal orders from the authorities to enhance its capacity for identifying and stopping fraudulent activity connected to its products or accounts. The majority of these orders are focused on the bank's consumer monitoring systems. Not very long ago, there was an allegation that the bank approved the operation of a $490 million Ponzi scheme. Hedge firms running $100 million Ponzi schemes are among the large financial companies whose consumers are being held responsible for their activities. This information suggests that big banks like Wells Fargo and maybe even Bank of America, which serves as Citadel's main middleman, will have to put in place stringent security measures before they can work with its clients. Finally, you may remember the following from the Peruvian BLL there is a distinct possibility that we are immersed in a system that is completely deceptive, it was previously revealed that we have a substantial amount of data, and that we are aware of the existence of synthetic short selling. However, in reaction to the circumstances, the Securities and Exchange Commission CC has not yet taken any further action, 